Welcome everyone. Hello, it's Tanya from MindSpark and with me today I have our very own Alicia who's our design anthropologist. If you haven't yet heard of MindSpark, nice to meet you. Thank you for connecting. We are a global cross-cultural qual agency, meaning that we work across the world every single day um, helping brands talk to their users, talk to their customers, talk to their clients. So having said that, we thought it would be a really cool idea to launch a remote research toolbox series to showcase you know, some of our favorite tools that we've used over the years. So our series is called Remote Research Toolbox Webinar Series. So it's not a webinar per se, um, we called it webinar. Think of it kind of like a podcast, just a few girls chatting um, with a few pictures for your visual aid. So today we're gonna start with Discuss Now, um, and it is our first platform of the series. And it really is one of the, I guess for us at MindSpark, it's one of the newer tools that we've collaborated with since 2019. So here you'll see uh, essentially a snapshot of what it looks like. So Discuss Now in, in simple terms, it's a consumer insights platform. So it helps clients with insights, real life moments, but more plainly, it's, it's really having those insightful conversations through messaging conversations. And you'll see right here, I mean, of course, we're all familiar with Messenger, we're familiar with WhatsApp. And what this is, it's, it's a solution where brands can now talk to their contacts it could be customers, it could be users, it could even be their own employees via a communication channel of their choice. On this slide particularly, you'll see the talk spaces. So these are essentially the spaces where the consumer will interact together with the moderator. So using WhatsApp or using Messenger and the moderator will actually have everything aggregated into this platform. And now I will invite Alicia to the stage. Um, at MindSpark, we actually did a project using this platform very recently um, called Snapshot. Um, so we actually wanted to, to talk to you all about how we use the platform and how, how it helped us and, and really what, what we like about it. So go ahead, Alicia. Hi, Tanya. Thanks. Um, hi, everyone. So yeah, as Tanya mentioned, we just used discuss now. Um, I, this is the first time that I used it. Uh, we did a three-week diary study in April with about 30 participants across over a dozen countries. Um, and we were curious, we wanted to look at the day-to-day -day of people who were living under some kind of stay-at-home order. For the first three days of participation, we asked people simply to tell us everything you did today from the time you woke up until the time you went to bed. And then after that, we had a different set of questions or tasks on various topics, everything from, you know, news consumption to food shopping to modes of communication, you know, like who did you talk to today and how did you talk to them and what did you talk about? So very, very open. We wanted to get this very nuanced, very detailed look at people's lives as they suddenly changed since the pandemic. And we wanted to try to discuss now for this. Um, as I mentioned, I had never used it before and it felt really appropriate because it has this more informal feel to it. You can, because you can send your questions and tasks through WhatsApp and Messenger, it feels like, I don't know, like a fun, more personal welcomed message, not something that you have to log into separately that you've never used before. It, it's just more like, hey, chat with us about what you're doing. And that's absolutely the vibe we were going for because we're talking about people's intimate, you know, daily details and, and everyone more or less was going through a very difficult time. So we wanted to take this more personal approach. For example, you know, one person who participated, she had just broken up with her boyfriend. Um, she was living in a country that was not her home country. Uh, she moved out of the place she was staying with uh, where she lived with her boyfriend. And now she was in an Airbnb with her dog. Um, she, incredibly lonely. And we got to share that together. And at the end of the three weeks, you know, she just said, thank you so much for talking to me and being here with me and, and, and experiencing this with me. And, and I don't know if that would have happened through a different platform. 
because of everything we learned on the platform, uh, we were able to break our findings into two different kinds of presentations. The first thing that came out very strongly was this emotional roller coaster that people experienced. So that was the first bit we wanted to speak to. And I think that's absolutely thanks to the way that the platform works and that people were able to share with us their day to day through these messaging apps. So that's that first part, feelings of lockdown. And then the second aspect we looked at was because we are a, a market research and user research company, we wanted to talk specifically to the brands that people turn to, the services that they absolutely could not live without, and then how that shifted um, now that people are staying at home. I've spoken already about some of the these strengths, what we thought that the platform really stood out for. Um, and I can take you through um, some examples of what people uh, wrote to us that kind of highlights some of these strengths. Um, for example, one participant sent us over the course of three weeks, she sent us 170 messages, primarily voice messages, some video, some photos, and some, some written text too. And the voice was just so powerful as a medium and so beautiful. And because she was submitting entries through WhatsApp, it was very easy to send a voice memo like just you know it's the app that's already on her phone she, and she mentioned this too that she has whatsapp groups that she regularly uses so super familiar right she didn't have to learn something new um it was on her mobile device so she, it was in her pocket all day which is another just grab it and go and then because she's using it primarily to talk to family and friends anyway it felt very normal for her i mean and that's how i felt reading them too i felt like she was chatting with a friend and i didn't I haven't had that experience um, per se with other platforms that are in a more formal setting. On that note, we definitely ourselves at MindSpark have received questions um, about this platform from, from clients interested in using it. So I thought it would be a really cool idea for us to just, you know, go through the questions and, and you know, and, and essentially help anyone that, that maybe has these questions on their mind right now. So one of the main questions that, that we do get is I mainly conduct online communities and diary studies. Is this platform suitable for both types of studies or you know, what other types of studies can I do with it? Um, I think it worked really well for what we were doing, which was the diary study where people are you know, journaling their day to day. I think I would recommend it for that. Online communities, if they're closed, I think that would work fine. The benefit right. of it is that individual people receive it on the their preferred messaging app. So I don't think that, you know, if I'm using Messenger and you're using WhatsApp, that we would be able to see each other's messages and communicate. This is more about like a private personal experience. Because I did want to mention that um, they have some really interesting features happening on the moderator portal. They have different pages where they're trying to help the moderator and researcher do some analysis. So they have some interesting sentiment analysis happening, which I didn't feel like I was able to use that much for this study, which was just very open and tell me about your day. But I could see it being really interesting for, I don't know, testing like a, a market uh, campaign, testing messaging, something like that. Like, tell me the language you would use around this. And then the it seems like the platform would a be able to do some of that analysis for you or aggregating for you. But so I would love to test that more. I mean, there's so many people that want to test um, experiences, for example, going to the supermarket and, you know, people, all they need to do is have their phones, their WhatsApp open or whatnot, Messenger. Okay, I'm, I'm at this aisle and I'm looking at this product and this is how I'm choosing my milk or, or something like that. So that was one of the examples um, that I had previously discussed about. Um, another question that comes up often, is this app or platform rather good and suitable for consumers or also b2b mm -hmm. um i would say it depends on the context depends on the study so for b2b if uh you're in a business that uses these apps if you're using one of the sister apps and it makes sense in your work context to be using whatsapp or messenger then absolutely. And, but if not, you know, if you're in a workplace that let's say does not allow Facebook apps, then that would be awkward to make yeah. that, to bring that into that space. So okay. I, could, I could definitely envision it for both, but it depends. Because what's the benefit of this is that we're using apps that people are used to using and, and there it's like a normal quote 
part of their day. So you don't want to introduce something that's going to throw people off like, oh, no, I have to use WhatsApp and I never do for work. You know, that would be an awkward experience and it wouldn't feel natural. And which is what I like about using this platform for the study we did, because it just felt like such a normal, natural way to communicate. And then it really people were able to lower their barriers and it felt really personal. So it depends. OK, no, but that's good to know, honestly. So this is this next question is, is really interesting because um, I know us at MindSpark, we talk a lot about voice and voice notes and how that really affects the way kind of we interpret things. But but can participants upload photos, videos and voice notes to this um, to this platform? And I think you may have spoiled it for us. In the <laughs> Tell me again. Tell me again. <laughs> Yes, you can. Uh, whatever <laughs> is allowed within the messaging app is, you know, you're able to do it. Um, it'll get sent straight to the moderator portal that I was using. And then you have access uh, to what they're submitting. And then just videos of, you know, um, people's home spaces or their work setup, photos of the bread they were baking or the puzzle they were working on. Or it's just a, another all these formats are great when they come together because you get a more complete picture of that person's life. And so let's take a look at this at this last question. And, and it kind of has to do with both users and moderators. So how do we each receive our tasks and how really can the moderator probe on these tasks? Well, the process on our side was that the researchers developed the research guide, the moderation guide. And then uh, we, we work closely with our project managers they scheduled all the tasks and when they could be because you can time when various tasks or questions are released to the participants so it always goes to that preferred uh, mode of communication so then you know the same exact questions will go to the participants in their email whatsapp or messenger based on what they selected as their preference okay and then in terms of moderation probing, you would just as the moderator go into your platform and probe and then those probes would actually just feed through the, the communication of, of the participant's choice. That's right. So everything for me, uh, the experience on my end is the same, no matter what platform or, or messaging app they've chosen. So for me, it's easy because it looks all the same. I, again, I'm not dealing with three different systems on my end. Um, and then it gets transferred, translated into whatever their preference is. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Alicia. It was really, really Thanks, interesting. Tanya. You know, to talk to you, to, for someone who actually, you know, moderated a, an actual project, to, you you got a real feel of, of the platform and how it works. And thank you for sharing what you really liked about it. I think I think it could be very helpful for other people who are interested in, you know, having this kind of chat or discussion with their customers, users, employees, etc. Thank you again. Um, thank you. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Yes, and you as well. Um, I hope everyone really enjoyed this. We look forward to having you back in our next episode. So that's it for now. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.